Hello. Pastor Roy back again. From sunny, beautiful, crisp Chesapeake, Virginia morning. The world is a dangerous place. The greatest cause of death worldwide every year is abortion. After that, it's heart issues, circulatory issues, then cancers, and then uh, the uh, seasonal flu and this uh, virus 19 going around right now. But every, every year, or every day, worldwide, 150,000 people approximately die. That's out of a percentage of over 7 billion people on planet Earth. 150,000 approximately die every day. And if what we believe is true, and it is, that Jesus Christ is God's sacrifice for the payment of all sin, for all mankind, for all time, that is absolutely spectacular, and it's greater news than any medical advancement we've ever had. Medicine will possibly prolong our lives to give us great opportunity either to find God through faith in Jesus Christ or having done that to serve him to bring others to Christ. And then, I, I think, as a 78-year-old man, you begin to think a little differently. Not how I can grow this church and, and uh, be of impact in my community as a pastor. You know, I've been there, done that, and now it's time to contemplate. And my contemplation is this. What is the ultimate goal of a, a person's life before God? What would please God the most, the greatest? And I believe I, I have an answer, if not the answer. And that is in the prayer of Jesus Christ. He, he prayed, that they may be one as we are one, uh, they, uh, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the hope of glory is clearly in, uh, identified. The hope of glory is something called Christ in you. What does that mean? Well, uh, we, we go through the, the process somewhat that uh, somebody comes to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So now they, they are a believer and according to uh, John 3.16, whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So they've, they've come in to, to eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. Then, as they begin to follow the Lord, at some point, they have a, an, a sometimes called an epiphany moment, a, a, a transforming moment, a moment in life when everything changes, and uh, the Apostle Paul says, um, if any man be in Christ, not a believer, but any man be in Christ. That's 
that's something more than just believing in Jesus Christ. You are now in him. You live and move and have your being. And, and so he is not only your Savior, but he is your Lord. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, delivered, gone, and all things are new. It's put in another way, take off the old garments and put in on the new garments. Uh, and so there's a progression there that everything is changed, everything is new because you are now in Christ. And I think uh, Jesus made it very clear that where he is, he, he lived in the Father. Uh, what, whenever he said, I only speak what I hear the Father saying, what does he did, do, do? He only did what he saw the Father doing. He was so moved and directed by the Father through the Holy Spirit that he was God's representative on earth, fully. And Jesus said that where I am, there ye may be also. Where was he? He was in the Father. He was directed. He was, he was uh, whatever he said, whatever he did. The Apostle Paul seemed to understand that. He said that uh, I live, let, yet no longer I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So there's, there's a transformation of, of life for the, rather than God be the supply of my needs. The Lord, give me this, give me that. You see, I need this. You see, I need that. A transform from that to, Father, what wilt thou have me to do? Like Isaiah, he saw the Lord high and lifted up. His train filled the temple, and he came to the place where God called. He was, he was brought to a place where he heard the voice of God. The voice of God is speaking, but not everybody is ready to hear it. The noise of the background of life drowns out the, 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 the whisper, should we say, of the voice of God. But now he was ready. And he heard the voice of God, and the voice said, Who will go for us? And uh, you know the story. He said, Here am I, Lord. Send me. There's a dedication of the life to God. So rather than, Lord, this is what I'd like you to do for me. And so, Lord, what would thou have me to do and dear friend you are on purpose for a purpose on earth your life has significance if you turn that life over to God to Jesus Christ and there is no greater way to live than to live that way And so, Jesus said, The secret to fruitfulness is he that abideth in me and I in him. Two things happen. Number one, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And number two, that fruit shall remain. So, if you want a fruitful life, not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's the secret to ultimate fruitfulness because not only do you have much fruit but it'll remain it's not just here today gone tomorrow you know the Bible speaks about things do moth and rust do corrupt it's gone but when you move and work in the direction prompting of the Spirit of God through having gotten quiet enough to be in his presence, to hear that magnificent voice. I would say that's the ultimate way to live. Not to accrue to myself popularity or position or fame or finances. 
No, seek ye first the kingdom of God, the heart of God, the pleasure of God, the presence of God. The, 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 that is the ultimate. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What does that mean? That means that I have a strong, living, vital faith in the Lord Jesus Christ every day. And as a result of that faith, uh, there is imputed unto me uh, righteousness, not earned, but through faith in Jesus Christ, it's imputed unto me. It's uh, counted uh, to me. My neighbor across the street just waved at me. Uh, Mr. King, he used to be a bodybuilder. He still looks pretty good in his 80s. And so, as I contemplate, what, what, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? You know, I'm, I'm 78. If I live as long as Moses, I've got 42 years left. You can do a lot of stuff in 42 years. And uh, they're saying, your life has significance as a value. And I encourage you, get alone with God. Get quiet. He will take the broken pieces of your life and make something beautiful again. So wherever you are, be blessed. And the best advice I could give is abide in Him and He in you, and you will have a fruitful and blessed life. God bless you. My name is Roy. I'm your friend, and I'll be back. Goodbye.